YouTube. I was going to make a video today about my playing and my new philosophy on how I approach the instrument and stuff, but I've been playing like crap the last couple days, so that seems kind of like a bad idea. I'm going to figure that out, and for now, we're going to talk about every single instrument that I've ever owned, because I finally put them into a spreadsheet. I actually had one, and I just updated it and had to add like eight instruments. <laughs> And uh, let's uh, quickly review, kind of in chronological order, it's not super specific because I, I don't think I could even do that, um, every instrument by category. So I have them in like basses, large tenors, small tenors, medium tenors, contras, and valvey boys. And I guess we'll start with perhaps the most interesting and storied category, also the oldest category, the bass trombones. Just gonna do this real quick, each instrument. Up first, the first one that I owned, of course I played basses before this, didn't own them, my Holton 180 Minic modified, had open wraps, split triggers, that's probably it, I don't think anything else was done. It was a pretty good instrument, this got me all the way, most of the way through undergrad, fell apart probably like six times. I swear they used like as little solder as they possibly could when putting that together, both Holton and Minic. I, every time I would get it out, another brace would pop. Um, but it played pretty well, sounded pretty good, just didn't really match my sound concept as it changed, or the mouthpieces I wanted to use as they changed. And uh, I ended up selling it, and I honestly don't regret that one much. Yes, it was my first bass, my first love. Oh well, I have better horns now. Next up, there's two horns in a row here that I... Um, Got from a guy and I was gonna pay him and I ended up not having the money so I had to send him back. I had a 50 BOG, open wrap, gold bell. This one I honestly don't remember much. I remember having it and I probably played it like three times and I think it was very good. Just kind of useless open wrap with a single. You can't pull it to E. It sticks out like three feet because it's the original Bach wrap. And it was good, I guess. I'm not sure why I wanted it. And then also a 50 B2 that had been modified. This was a very good instrument. Original Bach valves, open wrapped, split triggers of course, um, and it was just, uh, it had a yellow bell. It was a really, really good instrument. Vastly different from the Minic 180 that I had at the same time. And I kind of wish I'd been able to buy it. Now, I'm not sure if I would need it because it's a dependent instrument. Uh, I want independent valves. Um, but at the time, I probably could have used something like that. So a little bit of regret that I wasn't able to buy it. Moving on, I got a 50B Corporation. This is the instrument that made me decide that, oh, my Holton 180 is not it. So I put the 180 up for consignment and used the 50B by itself for an entire uh, semester plus of undergrad, which was very hard, but also very rewarding because that instrument was so much better in every way, minus you know only having one valve. I do regret not having this one a little bit. I traded it for some Shires parts. Man, what a good instrument. It had a Shires linkage, I think was the only modification, and it was just in like really good shape. Ah, good horn. Uh, around the same time, I got a 50B2, also Corporation. Um, it was kind of beat up. It wasn't in awful shape, uh, but it was very ugly, and it had two frozen valve uh, tuning slides, so I couldn't tune them. The F was a little bit low, and the second valve was an E flat. Just like, not super useful. Um, not bad, but uh, it was pretty stuffy, and it didn't, you couldn't really uh, change the sound on it. Just kind of made the sound I wanted to make. I ended up trading that for, and the 50B, for my 50 with True Wars. I got a Corporation Bell set up for Shires, uh, B62 Shire Slide, Shires True Bore Valves and a Shires C or B tuning slide, I don't remember. And I used this horn for a long time. I think if you've watched my videos for a long time, you will have seen it at some point. Wow, it's been like eight years since I got it. Uh, that got me through a lot of stuff, a few years. Um, eventually ran into it not playing or sounded like my sound, con uh, my sound concept was. It just always a little bit narrow, always a little bit reticent to respond, like in the low register. Some of that's definitely me, but uh, I got a new instrument and it sounded way better. And that was my 50 with stainless steel, 
uh, not axials. I mean, they are axials, but stainless steel first generation Thayers from 1989. Um, this one was so cool. It had hand bent tubing built at Brass Lab by Chuck McAlexander. Um, a silver plate incorporation bell and tuning slide, just a normal Bach 50 slide. And it really opened up my world to how a 50 could sound. Didn't play super great. Um, it was definitely more open. Um, I had to have the valves uh, lapped in the spec, so you had to shave a bunch of material off the valve uh, casing so that they would be in spec again, they wouldn't just leak. Bunch of work had to be done to that instrument. I eventually put on this bell, which is the best 50 bell that I've ever owned by a long shot, and that made that horn very special. I do miss the valves. I don't really miss like the slide or the original bell or anything, but those valves are also very special once they were in good working condition. An amazing horn. Um, do I need it now though? Not really. Um, I also got a 50T single Thayer. Um, I, this may have been a factory instrument, but it also had a stainless steel Thayer on it. So I'm not sure if they ever made those from the factory, not sure. Uh, this horn was like, okay, it was a little too open. I think the valve was out of spec as well. Um, and I was just like, I don't need a single that I can't pull the E. Like, I don't even really like singles, but if you can't pull the E, it is useless. And I ended up selling that. Don't really regret it. I'd like to play it again to see if my impressions were correct. I also got a Con 60H, single valve version of the famous 62H, of course. Um, this horn was okay. It was pretty beat up when it got to me. I had to pull a lead pipe. Um, had a couple other things done to it. There were a bunch of dents and things like in the J-Bend. And it was pretty good once I put in a couple other different lead pipes. But it didn't really blow me away. And I just, it's a single. I don't need a single. And to make it a double that I want to play would cost a lot of money. And I just, I was like, eh, it's not worth it. So I sold that. Don't really regret it. Um, apparently it's really cool now. It's got like independent Olseal, uh, Olsen... <laughs> Olseal. What does that mean? Olsen rotors and a cut bell. It's like completely different now. I'd like to play it now. Um, I also got a 50B2 Corporation. Um, this one had the D slide. It had the original triggers. Not great. And it had a hole in the end of the D slide. So I had to put blue tack on it so it wouldn't leak. Um, it was pretty good. You know, it wasn't like amazingly special or anything. Made a good sound but it didn't have split triggers and I did not have the money to have them split. So I sold that and got a 50B2 again, um, this time modified by Larry Minnick again. Two Larry Minnick horns. Um, had open wrapped D slide, split triggers, and it was pretty gosh darn good. Um, I actually remembered, because this is the second take of this video, I won the Disneyland Band audition on that instrument. I just put the... Uh, <laughs> I put this tuning slide on it, my uh, copper hula tuning slide on it, and one of my random box slides and just went and won that audition on that instrument. And I was like, oh, maybe this is pretty good. And I used it on a couple gigs and I really quite enjoyed it, but I didn't need it. I also had the stainless steel axial base at the time and I just ended up selling that as well. Do I miss it? Eh, not really, it did its job. Uh, I got a really cheap 90s 50B that it was super beat up. I mean, the valve was trashed. The slide was pretty trashed. The bell was nearly trashed. Tune slide was trashed. Whole thing was not in good shape. Um, I ended up uh, fixing a bunch of it. Took the bell off. Had that cut. That was my first screw bell. And it was really good, um, but it was pretty heavy. Ended up selling that. And then ended up selling the slide and the valve section and the tuning slide. So it went four different directions and actually served some real good in its life. Uh, don't miss it really, but that did some good. And then I got a 62H Greenho, Con Greenho. So this one was a valve section shipped to Con that they put on the 62H um, rather than Greenho building 62H parts into their instruments. So this is kind of like the cheap Greenho. Um, and it was pretty good. I have a feeling the slide, something about it was not quite right because it always played kind of a little bit narrow, a little hard to play. Um, wasn't bad. Uh, valves were in good shape. Like the valve, uh, the bell section was in good shape. But when I put other slides on it, it always just seemed to play better. 
And uh, at the same time, I had my Bach with the uh, stainless axials, and I was like, I don't need two fancy double bases. Did not have the money for it at the time. Ended up selling that, and don't miss it. Uh, soon after that, I got a 50B Corporation again. This is my second one. And this was a very special 50B. It was so good. And it was in like immaculate condition. Um, I kind of wanted to keep it. But again, I don't have a use for a single. I just, there's no point in me having one. And it was so good that I, I was like, I don't want to chop this up and make it into a double and stuff. I ended up selling it. So I, I kind of miss it. But again, I don't have a use for a single. So not super bad about it. Uh, around this point, I got fed up with my stainless steel fares. They're just such a maintenance nightmare for me. And at the time, I don't think I was playing super well. So I sold those and got Meinl Schmidt rotors instead. Had those set up for kind of the same bell and all that kind of stuff. Good valves. The F valve had too much throw for some reason. Something about the geometry. And uh, I was playing really badly at the time. So I really couldn't maximize what those valves could do. Um, and I ended up selling those as well. We'll talk about what I replaced them with at the very end of the base section. I also, around the same time, got a 50 B3O with a gold bell. And uh, it played very, very badly. Just like, really badly. Above mezzo forte, it was super stuffy, felt bad. And so I just had the valves taken off, swing, and had uh, Shire's rotors put on instead. Ta-da! And it played so much better. Just a really, really good instrument. Um, it was very picky, however, with mouthpieces, lead pipes, slides. Had to be just right, or it would just kind of like be this brittle sound, or really thin, or hard to play. And I kind of got tired with that and ended up trading it for 50 with Olsen rotors. I actually forgot about this instrument for a moment. Um, and this was from a guy who had a 50 bell that was cut and Olsen rotor valves. I had to do a lot of stuff to make it playable for my hands because the ergonomics were set up for this guy and they were just completely different than mine. Um, and once I got it there, it was pretty good, but uh, I didn't need a cut bell on it. It made it just kind of heavy. And the valves, I think, were kind of out of spec. They were kind of leaky. I'm just never super enjoyed like the sound I got with or sound I got with it or how it played. But I sold it to a friend, and he's, like, advanced in major auditions with it. So, obviously, I think I was at fault, and that was a pretty good instrument. I got my Holton 185 a couple years ago. Seems weirdly long now. Um, I got this pretty cheap. It had the E-flat slide, and it had non-split triggers. So, a lot of um, room to grow, shall we say. And it ended up being an amazing instrument. It's in really good shape. It sounds so good. And now it has split triggers and a D slide. So it has kind of all the modern amenities that you need out of a bass drum own. And it's so good that I'm just keeping it. Most of my uh, vintage double valve, usually dependent horns, I just, I get rid of them because they're just not that good. They're a little bit hard to play. They don't sound that good. So why keep it? And this one sounds amazing. It plays amazing. And I just, I don't feel the need to get rid of it. So it's still here. One of the few, I think is the first instrument that I still own on this whole list. Um, after this, I got a 50 T3L, the large bell, and it had TVI valves or something. I don't think they were OE Thayer's. Um, Got this back into spec, cleaned it, did a bunch of stuff. Um, ended up putting a different bell on it. We'll talk about that in a second. And ended up selling it because I owned it at the same time as this. And it didn't serve a whole lot of purpose. So really cool horn, uh, but I just didn't need it. I still have the L bell, though. And it might go on this silver-plated 50B, another Corporation 50B. It made, it's like the fourth one on this list, I think. Um, Pretty beat up instrument, um, had a lot of work done to it, and it still didn't play super well, so I took the bell off, put that bell on the 50T3L, and that became like this really special instrument. And now I have the, I sent the slide off to a friend, I have the valve section sitting in a drawer because the knuckle going into the valve from the slide had a giant tear in it, and that's why it played so badly. So I might put a new valve in there, 
and put the L bell on it. And I'll have a 50 BL with a silver plated valve section. It's gonna be super weird, but I have the parts for it and I feel like, why not? May as well just make an instrument out of these parts, but otherwise just taking up room. And otherwise that instrument is gone. On to this, which is actually my most recent instrument, but it's not gonna be the last on the list. Edwards 454, very old, like 92, 93 build. And I just really like it. Had some work done to it, uh, solder joint that was popped, fixed the slide so it doesn't flop over anymore. And that was it. It's in great shape. It plays really well. I put an Edwards 2 lead pipe in there and it's just a great modern bass. So for now, I'm gonna keep it. It's a really good backup for this, the Monster Horn, uh, Olsen Axials, Bach Bells, I have two of them, my Copper Hula tuning slide, and a few slides that I can use on it. Probably the best trombone I've owned, and right now, the primary bass. So on this list of, I don't know, 17, no, no, what is it, 22, 22 bases, I still own three of them. Holden 185, Edwards, and the Bach with Olsen Axials. Woo! So that's the bases, 22 of them, yes. I I don't think I'm forgetting any. I, I had to add one during the last take of this. Let's move on to the very short contrabass list. There's one of them. Um, it's my no-name, who knows, German opera opera model contra it's an opera model because it's short and back you don't want to hit it on the the wall behind you um and i think it was made by kohl k-u-l-l -L, german maker it could be a monka m-o-n-k-e who knows it was rebuilt with voigt v-o-i-g-h-t valves at some time in the last 15 years who even knows about that um added like you know independent uh triggers for the valves and other than that, I know nothing about it, but it was cheap and it's a Contra and it's not a Jin Bao with Hagman's. So it's about as good as it could possibly be for the price. Very happy with that instrument. Uh, let's do another short list. Let's do the medium tenors. Um, to start off with, uh, this was actually my wife's instrument and then she stopped playing trombone. She had a uh, 2000s 36BO, open wrap, 36, yellow bell, yellow slide. It was a really good playing 36. Um, the slide was kind of borked. It had something wrong with the action, the alignment, dents in the tubes. Still don't know what it was because I ended up selling it to buy other cool stuff. This one I do regret a little bit because it was a really good player. And, you know, it was, it was my wife's like first professional trombone. So I do miss that one a little bit, but she doesn't miss it and I don't really need it now. Um, much later, I got a 36B, an 80s instrument. Um, I played it for a little bit, and I was kind of like, oh, this is not as good as I thought it was gonna be, and I ended up selling it. Don't miss that one at all. And most recently, I got a 36K. Um, it's a corporation instrument that was obviously a straight horn or a 36B at some point, and someone had put a K valve on it. I'm not sure why, still can't really wrap my head around that. Um, and that one is being made into the, the monster multi-tenor project. Um, so it's very excited for that to come around. Um, it was pretty good as it was. It's going to be even better. The large tenor list. This one's a little longer. Um, one of the first instruments I got in undergrad after my bass was a 42BO. That was pretty bad. Um, it had sad bell, so the bell drooped a little bit. Um, and I played it and used it in a bunch of different stuff. And then one day I tried my friend's 42T and I was like, oh my God, this is so much better than my horn. Um, I, there's something about my slide or something that was really bad. I was just used to it, but it was not a good instrument. Ended up selling that or trading it or something. Honestly, don't remember. And I went without a large tenor for a long period of time. Um, I then got a 90s, I think maybe late 80s, 88H that was super cool. It had con engraved on the inside of the bell in the flare just con super cool this is pre-generation two so it had a remington lead pipe i think it was string linkage as well and honestly it was a pretty good player the bell had been really mangled at some point and someone brought it back to life 
it was fine. Uh, it totally worked. Um, I just didn't really get along with the con concept, and so I ended up selling that, and I got a 40 uh, 4B, 4B2B, 42B Corporation that was really, really messed up. Um, all sorts of problems with that. The uh, F-attachment uh, crook would just come off of the tube, so you couldn't even pull it out. But I used that for a bunch of stuff in, under, in grad school, um, and it lasted me quite a while. And I combined that with the next horn, a 42BG, so I had the Gold Bell, also Corporation, that someone had narrowed the slide on and put a different crook on it and, like, took one of the braces out and, like, did all this weird stuff to it. Not a bad instrument, but it was just kind of strange. And I combined those two instruments into a 42 with an Olsen valve, a prototype valve, and open wrap, and it had detachable things so I could use either bell on it. And at the time, it just didn't play well for me. I think it was probably my playing. Um, I'm really not sure. I wanted it to be amazing, and it just just didn't do it for me. I ended up trading that for an Edwards T350, with which had like kind of a rose bell and some kind of like a lessy specs. It had the axial valve, and it was okay. It just didn't blow me away. And again, my tenor playing at the time, not great. I ended up trading it, I think, and I got a Bach A47 with the rotor and a straight gooseneck as well. So I had both parts, came with the original case and everything. Um, this horn got me pretty good distance. Um, eventually, kind of got tired of how it responded, like the low range and stuff. Um, ended up selling that kind of piecemeal, different parts, and got a Bach 42T. It may have been just the bell section actually, but I had other slides to use on it. And this horn was okay. I think the valve probably needed some work because it's always a little fuzzy, a little bit undefined. Sometimes I would like the sound and then sometimes just didn't do anything for me. Ended up keeping that at the same time as this, but I ended up selling it. Um, I had a 42B that was silver plated. Again, just a bell section. Probably an 80s instrument, I think. Um, and it was ex-military, so it was kind of beat up. <clears throat> Had a reinforcement plate on the bottom of the valve to keep you from breaking the knuckle when you're snapping it in hard maneuvers. Um, and it sounded really big, just this big, chonky sound out of it. And otherwise, it was okay. Ended up selling that to a friend. I also had a 42B 2000s instrument um, that was kind of better in every way, and I used that for a major gig. And it did really well, and I just traded that off for, oh, the carbon fiber slide. And right now, I actually have no large tenor. So none of these instruments I own. I own a couple slides. I own two slides for a large tenor, but no instruments. That will soon be rectified, of course, with the large tenor monster project. On to the small tenor list. My voice is going away. Small tenors. First up, Elkhart Con 6H. This is the second instrument I bought in undergrad because I got lead trombone in the big band as a euphonium major. I was like, okay, well, I need an instrument. And I got a 1965 Con 6H, and it was amazing. It was in really good shape, amazing slide, an amazing player. I miss that horn, I really do. I'm not sure if I would use it now. Like, it, I don't know if it would be better than my 16Ms. It's not gonna do the same thing as my 3BF, but that was a really amazing instrument. Um, I also picked up my wife's 6H because she bought one as well. Um, this was a 67 Con, also an Elkhart, and it was not nearly as good. This one I kept for a very long time because um, I needed a tenor of some sort, and I used it for like large tenor duties. I used it for everything, and it just never did it for me. It was obviously worse than the one that I had, and that always makes me sad because <laughs> I sold the wrong one. I should have sold this one kept the one that I had. Um, and I played a student's 16M, another box 16M, and I was like, whoa, this is way better than my, six, uh, my 6H. Ended up buying it from him, used it for a while, and then found out the intonation quirks are very weird. Part of my playing is default, I think, uh, but it was so quirky, and I was like, I don't know if I can use this everywhere. Ended up playing a an 80s 3B at a friend's place, and I was like, oh my God, 
I need this. It's so easy. It's so consistent. It's so easy to play. And ended up buying that. And I still have the slide for it. So when I use it in my 3BF. Um, I also got really cheap. This one doesn't really count. Yamaha 354. Like I got it for like 40 bucks or something. Ended up selling it for 150. So made some money. Um, it had a, like a dented tuning slide, but otherwise it was in great shape. And honestly, very good playing instrument. I think this was probably better than the 6H that I used to have, the second one. Um, soon after this, I got a 3B Silver Sonic. Um, I think I got an entire instrument, and what I did is I kind of kept the parts I liked, put all the parts that I didn't like as much into another instrument, the brass bell, a different tuning slide, and the slide that came with a Silver Sonic bell. And it was still a fine 3B, but I sold that and kept the rest. And that was my large or my small tenor for a while. Um, eventually, the Silver Sonic Bell, I was just kind of like, not too happy with, took a little too much energy, didn't do anything for me valve-wise. So I got a 3B F um, bell section. And I got actually another slide with that kind of separately. Ended up selling the 3B Silver Sonic as an entire instrument and kept a 3BF, still have that. One of the best instruments I've ever owned. I played it probably more than any of my other instruments in the last couple of years. It just gets so much use. Um, bought a 16M, another Bach, 90s instrument, an amazing instrument. Haven't really used it because I haven't had the call for it. Um, it's still here. I have two small bores and it was that's one of the ones I'm gonna keep. I also have a Corporation 16M. And I still have that one too. I'm selling it right now because it's not as good as my 90s horn, but it's also very good. Um, some part of me wants to put an F attachment on it, on it, which would I think uh, be very neat, but I should just sell it. I don't really need it. Again, pretty good. And I also got a 2B, a King 2B Liberty, 1947, I think is the year, which was amazing. Perfect condition, original mouthpiece, original case, which smelled, so it got went in the trash. Um, just a really amazing instrument, but I don't need it. It's a little bit different than my other stuff, and I don't really, I just I just don't need to keep it. So sold that as well. I still own three of the horns on this list, which tells you how much more I use small bore than large bore. On to the last list. Finally, the valve instruments. First up, the first instrument I ever owned is my Yamaha 842. It's actually on the floor right here. Um, my parents bought it for me because I was going to be Euphonium Major. I played the crap out of it and uh, I decided not to be Euphonium Major. But I've kept the instrument because it's been very useful over the last few years. Gotten some really cool high profile gigs on it. It's amazing. It does all the Euphonium things. The only problem was the valves have always been a problem after I lent it out and somebody put blue juice in it. And that was a really major mistake now they're really good i had my friend um, ben work on them and now they're just butter and they work all the time i can pick the horn up after six months and it still works it's now i actually want to play it a little bit um, my wife this is really cool uh, for christmas years and years ago got me a pocket trumpet i'm not sure if we've seen that on the channel actually maybe once um but yeah she got me a pocket trumpet and it's some chinese horn but it's actually pretty well built plays pretty well and on like really long road trips and stuff I'll just play scales on it while I drive um again it just sits in the closet but I really like that thing I also have a Yamaha marching baritone a YBH 301 MS silver plated it's the same model that I used when I marched drum corps for four years um so a lot of sentimental value there it's not the one that I used but it's the same thing and honestly they play really well um, not super in tune, but I'm very used to the tuning quirks at this point. And for teaching, like when I teach marching band, it's a perfect instrument because I can just lug it around, kind of toss it around. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I know how it plays. I can just pick it up and just make a pretty good sound. Um, so I keep it. Don't really need to get rid of it. I also had an old flugabone, the marching trombone, the compact one. And it was very good as well. I kind of wanted to use it as a bass trumpet, but that's not what it is. And after a while, I was like, I just don't need this. It's fun. It's fun to noodle on. Um, in some ways, it's kind of like the pocket trumpet. You can like play and drive. But I ended up selling that. Um, kind of wish I had kept it until now, 
and sold it now because now they're worth a bunch of money for some reason. And that is the entire list as far as I know. Like I said, I had to add instruments to this like over the last like half hour because I was like, oh yeah, that instrument. And there's probably a couple more that I've forgotten. Quite the list. Thank you for sitting with me for half an hour as I um, regale you with the tale of the 50 instruments that I've owned. Soon to be more, of course. There's always more on the way and I have more products I want to complete. Um, that's about it and I'll see you all next time.